all of you are young people, you became Europeans. You are Europeans. Think now as Muslim Europeans or European Muslims. Your role in life is to worship Allah Jalla wa'ala, to protect yourself from the fire of hell, to call people to Allah Jalla wa'ala, and then after that, your role is to establish the deen of Allah Jalla wa'ala. This is the role of Muslims in general, to establish the deen of Allah Jalla wa'ala. What does that mean? To make the deen of Allah Jalla wa'ala superior over any other deen. الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ما بعد In the previous session we elaborated more on the principle of ibadah and we said that the definition of ibadah encompasses everything in our life. Ibadah includes all actions that Allah Jalla wa Ala like, whether those actions are carried out by our hearts, by our tongues, or by our limbs. And once we say all actions, this including social activities this include habitual activities this include this includes uh, political activities this includes militant activities this includes everything okay and we have explained that in details by the end of the previous session we asked a question and the question was, is it allowed to participate in politics? What is the ruling regarding political participation? And we had different views. Yes? Brothers and sisters, when you uh, try to think about the answer of something, you need first of all, to think about the answer in a very abstracted way. You know what does abstracted way mean? Don't think about the answer of a particular situation or certain situations that you have experience with. Just identify as they, the hukum of the mas'ala. The hukum, the original hukum of the mas'ala. Then later on, you take the hukum and you implement it on that particular situation. Okay? If you do not follow this structured way of identifying the ruling of any issue, you will be lost and you will be confused. Because you might think what is halal haram and what you might think what is haram as halal because you limited your understanding of this particular issue you limited it to what you see in your life okay for example if a person says that it is allowed for the person to eat dead flesh or dead meat out of necessity 
he, if he doesn't eat this haram meat, he will die. So if someone asked him, what is the ruling regarding eating dead meat? He will say what? He will immediately jump into what? Huh? Exactly, that's a very good point. He will immediately say it is halal. Why? Because he has limited his thinking to what? To the situation he has experience with. And brothers and sisters, this is a big problem many people fall in in the West. When you, whenever you, they ask about any particular issue, they immediately think of the situation in the West. And this is very embarrassing. Because if the situation changes, then they will change their views. In fact, uh, this is very embarrassing for people in general, whether in the West or in the East. When they change their views, then they are confronted and they say that we have changed our views because the situation has changed. Okay? From the beginning, you should give the answer or you should think of the issue in a very abstracted way. What is the ruling of eating dead flesh? The ruling is haram. So, someone then need Someone needs to ask the question, listen, I am in a situation whereby if I don't eat this haram meat, I will die. Then the answer will come based on that situation is it is halal for you. Okay, or maybe wajib. Sisters, is it clear? Yes. This is a very important principle in the way we think and approach issues. For example, when we talk about political participation, although I will elaborate more on it, inshallah, we will have one session uh, about political participation. In Egypt, before the Arab Spring, many uh, scholars and du'at who used to follow the Salaf methodology used to say that it is haram to participate in the political process. And then when this regime was removed, all of them started to jump and establish and form parties. All of them almost. Not almost, all of them. Maybe just one or two isolated scholars who remained isolated. I remember in an interview with one of the scholars who used to say that it is haram. The interviewer asked him, how come what we know is Salafis, they say that political participation is haram. And now you became part of a big party and you encourage people to participate in politics, in the political process. He said, yes, we encourage people now. He said, why? He said, because the, chain, the, the situation has changed. Before, in the Mubarak regime, what is a tyrant regime, dictatorship, we could not participate. And participation at that time leads to many problems. Or used to lead to so many problems. Aqidah problems and other problems. So we said at that time it is haram to participate. Okay? The interviewer said to him, the interviewer was clever. He said to him, but you in your book or article or fatwa, you did not say that political participation is allowed but because of the situation it is haram. You used to condemn, condemn, yeah, condemn, uh, criticize, speak negatively, badly, yeah, political participation in general. Is it clear? So the scholar 
started to say, well, you, you know, when things are changing, we have to... Okay, and the interviewer did not want to corner him more. But that was the case. Many scholars at that time, they used to say, it is haram, don't participate, etc. When things changed, all of them jumped. And that was very embarrassing for those who used to say that it is haram. And even Sheikh Qaradawi once, who sp so he spoke negatively, very negatively, okay, about them. Now, this is why we have to be careful, especially Tullab al-Ilm, yeah, especially Duat. Tayyib. First of all, saying about anything that is halal, haram, and saying about anything that is haram, halal, is one of the most dangerous things. In fact, Allah Jalla wa Ala equated that with shirk. In one ayah, Allah Jalla wa Ala says, وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَا تَصِفُوا أَلْسِنَتُكُمْ الْكَذِبَ هَذَا حَلَالٌ وَهَذَا حَرَامٌ لِتَفْتَرُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبِ Don't say, okay, هَذَا حَلَالٌ وَهَذَا حَرَامٌ in order to what? In order to say kathib, lying on behalf of Allah. In the other ayah, Allah Jalla wa Ala says, قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنَ وَالْإِثْمَ وَالْبَغِيَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ وَأَنْ تُشْرِكُوا بِاللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ عَلَيْكُمْ سُلْطَانًا وَأَنْ تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ So speaking on behalf of Allah, and giving fatwas, you are giving fatwas on behalf of Allah. If you are doing it without knowledge, it is Allah Jalla wa Ala mentioned it after shirk. So the person should not speak without knowledge. And which means that the person should be very, very careful in giving a fatwa without comprehensive and full understanding of the situation. So they used to say political participation is haram because they limited their understanding of, politi of political participation to the situation they are facing in Egypt. Now, unfortunately, many Muslims in the West, they say political participation is haram. Some people say that it is kufr because their understanding is limited to look political participation in the West or in certain incidents. Okay? I will elaborate more once we come to the political participation session, but I just want to mention this, which is a methodology of thinking. Don't ever give a fatwa which can be perceived as a general fatwa based on a particular situation that you are experiencing without limiting your fatwa to that only. Okay? So when we come to political participation, you should ask, as many brothers and sisters said, you need to tell us a dalil that it is haram. We don't need to bring you a dalil that it is allowed. Is it clear? <coughs> you need to give us a dalil against political participation. Is this clear? We don't need to give you a dalil that political participation is allowed. Is this clear? Yes or no? Okay, so if the, if political participation is allowed, then let people do, let people participate. If there is an exceptional case, we need to look at it. So to take something from halal to haram is difficult, it's not like this, okay? It's not like this. And that is the danger of saying that it is haram. So leave it as halal. If something happens, we need to look at it. And we cannot rush that it is haram. I hope that this point is clear. So 
If someone were to say, but political participation is ibadah. You just say that everything is ibadah. Political participation is ibadah. And if it is ibadah, we need what? We need a dalil. We say, we have said that ibadah is of two types. Ibadah that the sharia came up with. So we need sharia to tell us how to do it. And ibadah, which is what? <coughs> which is, it is uh, ibadah because of the consequences, because of the intention, because of what it leads to. Okay, this type of ibadah, originally speaking, it is a adah, it is a habit. And originally speaking, we should not say that we need a dalil to do this ibadah. Is it clear, sisters? Yeah, brothers? Okay. Yeah, brothers and sisters, this is a very, very important principle. And it is needed everywhere in our life. And this is the rahmah of sharia. Ah. If we need a dalil to say that everything, if we need a dalil for anything to be halal, life will be miserable. Life will be difficult. It will be impossible, in fact. <coughs> yes? We need a dalil that you can use cups of water like this. Yeah? We need a dalil that it is allowed to sit like this. We need a dalil that it is allowed to use computers, laptops. We need a dalil that it is allowed to have a setup for teaching like this. We need a dalil that people can sit like this. We need a dalil to manufacture planes. We need a dalil to use planes to travel. We need a dalil to eat something that has been processed. We need a dalil to that we can arrange countries like this. We need a dalil that the economy has to function like this. We need... It's impossible. Can you see this? Yeah? Impossible. And if we think with this mentality, we will be, we will push people away from deen. And as I mentioned yesterday in the lecture, why non-Muslims in Europe started to hate deen, to hate religion, this is one of the main reasons. They thought that Christianity is what? is restricting and limiting their actions and their life. So they said, come on, come on, we need just to progress. Mm. And when they notice that it is impossible to progress while you are Christian, they started to hate it. Okay? And subhanallah, Islam is not like this. Islam said, move. فَسْعُوا yeah. فَمْشُوا فِي مَنَاكِبِهَا Go, travel. Yeah. فَمْشُوا فِي مَنَاكِبِهَا هُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا He created everything for you on this earth. Yeah. So, if it is created for you, use it. Yeah. And if you use it, if we tell you that it is haram, stop. And that will make it much easier than to say, this is haram, this is haram, this is haram, this is haram. Stop, 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 stop. If I tell you do it, then you can do it. Is it clear? Yeah? This is a very important principle that we need to put in our minds. Okay. Again, as I said, we will come to political participation, but the point being is, ibadah covers everything in our life. If it covers everything in our life, we should not limit ibadah to certain actions. And we as Muslims, especially you young people, listen to this, all of you are young people, you became Europeans. You are Europeans. Think now, as Muslim Europeans or European Muslims. Okay? 
So don't think like, sorry to say this, like your parents. Your parents might think of something else. And your parents, they came to these countries in order to what? In order to improve their social economical situation. Because they were living with this mentality, they used to accept anything is given to them. Yes? But now, you should not live with this mentality. These are your countries. Yeah? Norway is your country. Britain is your country. France is your country. Netherlands is your country. You do not beg from your country. You change your country. Is it clear? We need to live, live with this mentality. This is a, a, a paradigm, a, a, a true shift, a major shift in the mentality. So when we talk about how to live in the West, I'm not focusing on masail, fiqh, masail. Is it allowed to, to uh, uh, drink uh, water, uh, drink any drinks that have some ingredients? Halal or haram, is it allowed to use this or that, the kind of hijab? Uh, is it allowed to use this color, not that color? We want to discuss what? The overarching principles. We need to talk about strategies. We need to talk about uh, the governing rules. We need to talk about the major issues in order to what? In order to flourish and progress. Okay? So this is needed, yeah, if we need to further Islam in the West. I hope that this point is clear and it should not be misunderstood. And as one time I was giving lecture to some people, I mentioned something like this. I said, brothers and sisters, Allah Jalla wa ala said, I think I mentioned it in the khutbah. Allah Jalla wa ala says in the Quran, yeah, uh, uh, he rephrased what Musa alayhi salam said إِنَّ الْأَرْضَ لِلَّهِ يُورِثُهَا مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ The land belongs to who? Huh? Musa is saying this because he wants to say that this land of land Fir'aun of Pharaoh is not his land it's not his country it is the land of Allah. And who deserves that land? He said, we do not deserve it as Bani Israel. Pharaoh doesn't deserve it. Allah will give it to whom, who is what? Who is following his commandments. Yeah? Yeah? Who? those who follow his commandments. And the aqibah, the end result will be for the pious people. So my dear brothers and sisters, living in the West, we should change our mentality from a subjugated mentality, from the mentality of maybe some, not all, of our parents or the first generation or so, or how the media wants to put it in our minds that these are not our countries, whatever we get from them, yeah, is Alhamdulillah. We are very thankful to them. Yeah? The Islam in general is against this kind of thinking anywhere in the world. Yeah? Don't be saddened. Don't have, don't be, don't grieve. You know, grieve, sorrow. Yeah? Because you will be superior if you are, what? Believers. So, this is a very important concept we need to put in mind when we talk about Islam in the West or how to live Islam in the West. I hope that it is clear. Now, let us move. So, once we say that, as a Muslim, because of ibadah, I need to be involved in many things. Yeah? Of course, it is not maybe me individually, but as Muslims. Because I have a limited 
resources myself as an individual I have a limited time so I can be involved in this but not that yeah but as Muslims we should think holistically and strategically uh, now let us come to another important point regarding the role of the Muslim in this life which is mentioned in this ayah يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قُوْ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَهْلِكُمْ نَارًا وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ أُعِدَّتْ عَلَيْهَا مَلَائِكَةٌ غِلَاظٌ شِدَادٌ لَا يَعْصُونَ اللَّهَ مَا أَمَرَهُمْ وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ All you who believe, protect yourselves and your families from a fire whose fuel is people and stones over which are appointed angels, harsh and severe they do not disobey Allah in what he commands them but what they are commanded they do what they are commanded to do what does that mean look at the next page we have what I call the circles of responsibilities you know in management they have something called the circle of influence and the circle of concern yeah or concerns have you seen this before the circle of influence and the circle of concern yeah there is here this ayah is talking about the circles of responsibilities Allah Jalla wa Ala says the the Prophet said, yeah? The best money that you, uh, you spend is the money that you spend to, uh, on yourself and your family. So, yourself is the first responsibility is your first responsibility I should save myself from the fire of hell this is the highest responsibility ever then after that I have a bigger circle of responsibility which is what my family my family who are under my authority if I am married my wife my children okay if I am not married, then the main responsibility lies towards my sibling, siblings, <coughs> my brothers and sisters, my parents. Okay? If, uh, <coughs> if I am not married, I do not have siblings, then to the close circle of my relatives. So, m m myself first, then the family, then the whole world. Okay? Now once we talk about the whole world, using the same concept, which is what? The circle is moving little bit, yeah? It's becoming bigger little bit, little bit, little bit. I should not start giving da'wah to the Americans before I give da'wah to the Norwegians. Yes? Similarly, I should start with what? Da'wah in my locality, in my street, my neighbors, and then move. Is it clear? Is it clear? So this is the circles of responsibilities. We took this from Qu Anfusakum wa Ahlikum Nara. And of course there are other adilla that prove this the circle the, the, the circles of responsibility moreover my brothers and sisters Allah Jalla wa'ala says قُوْ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَهْلِيكُمْ نَارًا وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ the most worrying thing in our life is what brothers what is the most worrying thing in our life what is the biggest thing that you, we should be worried of? Jahannam. Jahannam. Yeah? The fire of hell. 
That's why one of Maimun ibn Mahran, one of the great scholars of the second generation, he said, each punishment or any punishment other than the punishment of the fire of hell is what? Is easy. You will be, for example, in this life, uh, poor. You will die and this being poor will finish. A person created disabled, he will die and this disability will finish. Yes? Huh? You name it. But the punishment of the fire of hell, either it is eternal, even if it is not eternal, the Prophet وسلم, says in one hadith, وَلَوْ أَنَّ قَطْرَةً مِّنَ الزَّقُّومِ وَقَعَتْ فِي أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ لَأَفْسَدَتْ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ مَعَايِشَهُمْ If just a drop from the zaqqum, what is the qum? Is Jahannam, the fire of hell. Yeah, fell on earth, it will spoil, it will spoil the life of the people on this earth. Just by what? One drop. Yeah? In the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, فَكَيْفَ بِمَنْ تَكُونُ طَعَامُهُ وَشَرَابُهُ أو طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ So what about those people who have no food except what? Zaqqum. Which is either Jahannam or, sorry, we should have said this, uh, a tree in Jahannam, just one tree in the fire of hell. In Shajarat al Zakumi Ta'am al Athim, Kal Muhli Yagli fil Botun Kagali al Hamim. So, if just one drop from the Zakum, yeah, falls in our earth, it will spoil our life. So, how about those who do not have food except the Zakum? And therefore, just by common sense, simple common sense, the most worrying thing for us should be, am I going to go to Jahannam or am I going to go to fire of hell, uh, Jannah. And therefore, the main concern, the main role, the main aim for me is to what? Is to what? <clears throat> is to save myself from the fire of hell. And that's why when the Prophet ﷺ came to give da'wah to non-Muslims in Mecca, the first thing he said to them, when he was commanded to disclose the da'wah openly, what did he say? I warn you, I warn you, I warn you. What? Do I warn you? The fire of hell. This was the first statement. And we will elaborate on this once we come to da'wah. Okay? So, if that is the main concern, if I am living in the west or I am living in the east, my main concern is what? How to save myself, my family, the other circles from the fire of hell. Is this clear? Okay. Now, after saving myself and my family from the fire of hell, yes, I need to save others from fire of hell. How do I save others from the fire of hell? How? Yes? By giving them Da'wah to Islam. Call them to what? To accept Islam. Because the biggest ni'mah of Islam, the biggest ni'mah of Iman is what, my dear brothers and sisters? The biggest benefit of Islam, the biggest ni'mah of Islam is what? Is people will either 
do not go to hellfire at all or even if they go to hellfire they will be taken away from the fire of hell they will be protected from the fire of hell and they will go to Jannah this is the biggest ni'mah of Islam nothing gives you this ni'mah except what? Al-Islam therefore we need to share this with others who do not believe in Al-Islam in order to protect them from what? from the fire of hell is this clear? so da'wah to Allah Jalla wa'ala now da'wah to Allah Jalla wa'ala as you know is the function of the prophets the prophets came to do what? to give people da'wah to what? to worship Allah Jalla wa'ala agree or not? yeah? moreover Allah Jalla wa'ala commanded us to do da'wah ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal maw'idati al-hasana are you following this on the notes? yeah? are you following this on the notes? brothers okay ud'u ila sabili rabbik this is a commandment command to the way of uh, call to the way of your Lord using wisdom using maw'idha hasana yeah and argue with them with the people of the book or the kuffar in general yeah in a way that is best okay also Allah Jalla wa'ala says وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ in Surah Al-Ibran وَلْتَكُنْ مِنْكُمْ among you there should be an ummah to call to uh, khair goodness what is goodness? goodness is submission to Allah what is khair is submission to Allah and enjoying the good and forbid the evil this is one interpretation among you should be an ummah the other interpretation which is maybe more uh, uh, more accurate or maybe no not more accurate more correct yeah is to say you should be minkum. you should be an ummah that call for khair and enjoying the good and forbid the evil yeah and Allah Jalla wa ala says in the Quran وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِّمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Who is best? Who is better? وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا Who is better in speech? Than the one who is what? Who is calling to the way of Allah Jalla wa Ala وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ And do good deeds وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا And he said that he is from Muslims and there are many ayat that talk about da'wah I may mention some of the ayat that might give us different dimension when we talk about Muslims in the West uh, when we talk about the role of Muslims in the West then after that another important point after your role in life so we said your role in life is to worship Allah Jalla wa'ala to protect yourself from the fire of hell to call people to Allah Jalla wa ala, and then after that your role is to establish the deen of Allah Jalla wa ala. this is the role of Muslims in general to establish the deen of Allah Jalla wa ala. okay what does that mean? to make the deen of Allah Jalla wa ala superior over any other deen to establish it to propagate it to support it in order to make this deen of Allah Jalla wa ala superior superior and prevalent 
you know, prevalent over any other deen. Allah Jalla wa Ala says in the Quran, هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله. Yeah. This this phrase هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله. The translation of uh, is it is he who has sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth to manifest it over all other religions. This phrase was mentioned in the Quran three times. In Surah At-Tawbah, Muhammad and As-Saf. Okay? Uh, sorry, At-Tawbah, uh, Al-Fatih and As-Saf. In, in, uh, in two verses, Allah Jalla wa'ala says, وَلَوْ كَرِهَا الْمُشْرِكُونَ Yeah? In, in Al-Fatih and As-Saf, وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ إِنَ التَّوْبَةِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا Yeah? Okay. Now, uh, Allah Jalla wa Ala says, He has sent Muhammad, صلى الله عليه وسلم, He has sent him with guidance and the true religion in order. Yeah? In order. This is the translation here is to. To means in order to manifest it over all other religions. Why do we need to make Islam superior to any other religion? Because it is superior. Moreover, it is the pure word of Allah. It has not been distorted. Christianity, Judaism, yeah? Original Christianity is Islam. Original Judaism is what? Is Islam. But Christianity as it is now, is not Islam. It is shirk. It is kufr. Judaism as it is now, is not Islam. Is what? Is kufr and shirk. لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ ثَالِثُ ثَلَاثَةَ لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمْ Yeah? Indeed, they have disbelieved those who said that Allah is the third of the three. Indeed, they disbelieved those who said that Allah is the son, uh, those who said that Jesus is the son of God. Yeah? And Allah Jalla wa Ala says, غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ We know that المغضوب عليهم, we know that المغضوب عليهم is the Jews. Jews here is not the ethnicity. Yeah, Jews here is what? The followers of Judaism. Okay, this should be clear. And Christians is the Bali. So, if those are misguided people, who are the guided people? Muslims, who did not change the deen of Allah Jalla wa Ala. Not individual Muslims, but Muslims collectively. And because this is the pure deen of Allah Jalla wa Ala, we should make sure that this deen of Allah Jalla wa Ala is what? Is superior. Now, when the deen of Allah Jalla wa Ala is superior and dominant, dominant and manifests all other religions, yeah, all other ways of life, all other systems, at that point, yeah, real peace can prevail. Real justice can prevail. Real light can prevail. Because Allah Jalla wa Ala says, Allahu nuru samawati wal ard. Allah is the source of the light for heavens and earth. So there will be no light in the heaven or in the earth if the light of Allah Jalla wa Ala is not superior. Is it clear? Moreover, Allah Jalla wa Ala says to Adam and Eve, 
قال اهبطا منها جميعا فإما يأتينكم مني هدى فمن تبع هداي فلا يضل ولا يشقى ومن أعرض عن ذكري فإن له معيشة ضنكا ونحشره يوم القيامة أعمى قال رب لما حشرتني أعمى وقد كنت بصيرا قال كذلك أتتك آياتنا فنسيتها وكذلك اليوم تنسى الله جل وعلا sent Adam and Eve to this earth الله جل وعلا said go descend yeah descend go to this earth from the paradise in the heaven if you receive any guidance from me follow it فإما يأتينكم مني هدى okay فمن تبع هدى فلا يضل ولا يشقى the one who follows my guidance he will not go astray nor he will have difficulty in this life nor in the آخرة ومن أعرض عن ذكري the one who turns away from my remembrance what will happen to him he will have a miserable life and he will be resurrected as a blind person what does that mean it means without islam there will be what misery in the world and this is what is happening now because islam is not dominating the whole world and the law of islam is not the binding law upon humanity Yeah, we have so many injustices, so many killings, and all of these problems. When Islam was one of the superpower, sorry, the superpower, yeah, number of casualties, number of killings and murder was very minimum. But during the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, when Islam spread, yeah, all people living in the Islamic state were rich all people and all of them were giving zakah and they did not find anyone to take zakah to take a charitable money no one they did not find anyone yeah and it happened that the person the traveler travels long distance fears no one except Allah Jalla wa'ala and compare that situation or even during the Abbasi period or even during the Uthmani period in certain times not in all times with what is happening in the world now that's why it is part of our responsibility okay to make sure that this is happening of course as individuals or as people in the West we have so many priorities But we should be part of a big project. This big project is the project of what? Of the Ummah. And I am what? Part of the Ummah. You are part of the Ummah. You should be taking part in this big project. Is it clear? So this is the last responsibility that I have mentioned here. Yes? And you can see that Allah Jalla wa Ala, when he sent Adam, when he sent Adam, he mentioned to us what he said to him. وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ I am appointing a khalifa, or I am sending a khalifa in this earth, in this earth. Khalifa means what? Yeah? Khalifa, what does it mean? Khalifa, one of its main meanings is a person who will be in charge of the earth. In charge of the earth on behalf of who? And on behalf of Allah. Because the word Khalifa means he is representing someone. So he will be in charge of the earth on behalf of Allah. So Muslims who follow Adam. You know the Prophet Adam? Yeah? He came with what? With Islam. We are the followers of Adam. No one follows Adam now. No one follows Adam now except who? Muslims. No one follow, no one follows Abraham now except who? Muslims. No one follow Isa now except who? Muslims. No one follows 
Musa, Moses, now, except who? Muslims. We are the followers of all the prophets. We are the followers of all the prophets. And the details of the messages of all these prophets have been abrogated by who? By Muhammad Sallallahu The details, but the main concepts, yeah, are the same. And we are following the main concepts of the da'wah of Adam. The main da'wah, the da'wah of Abraham, the da'wah of Musa, the da'wah of Isa, all prophets. And we are following Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sahbihi wa Sallam in the details, in the Sharia. Okay, so Adam was appointed by, as a Khalifa by Allah. We are the children of Adam. We should follow his message. And we should be what? The Khulafa on this earth. Acting on behalf of Allah Jalla wa Ala. What does that mean? Allah Jalla wa Ala established his deen on the heavens. And Allah Jalla wa Ala made this life as a test. Who is going to establish my deen? It is who? Human beings. The children of Adam. And that's why in the other ayah Allah Jalla wa Ala says, what? Inna aradna al-amanata ala al-samawati wal-ardi wal-jibal fa-abayna an yahmilnaha wa ashfaqna minha wa hamalaha al-insanu innahu kana zaluman jahula. We have presented this amana, the trust. What is the trust? It will come. We have presented this trust on heavens, on earth, on mountains. All of them declined. They don't want to carry it. Who carried that amana? The children of Adam. وَحَمَلَهَا insan, Because of his ignorance. And because he oppressed himself. Okay, by carrying this amana. This amana is to be the khalifa of Allah Jalla wa ala, acting on behalf of Allah Jalla wa ala on this earth. What does that mean? We need to make, that, make sure that trust is established. Allah Jalla wa Ala established his religion in, on the heavens and we need to establish our religion, this religion, sorry, the religion of Allah Jalla wa Ala on earth. And then we will be the representatives of Allah Jalla wa Ala on earth. We will be the Khalifa. Okay, now we have ended the, second, the first session. And we will move, inshallah, to the second session. The second session, in reality, is a rephrase of the first session. So if we understood the first session, the second session is already covered. Okay? So we will go through the second session quickly, inshallah. Yeah? In fact, if we understand, if we understood all what we have said, we will be able to proceed through the uh, notes very quickly, insha'Allah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.